So this game is designed, uh, this class is going to be about, uh, about pawns. So. so I found this game that I played actually recently against a good friend of mine, Alex Onishuk, and this is the first round of the US Championship. So I am playing with the white black pieces against Grandmaster Onishuk. So d4, e6. I played this move, I just wanted to see his reaction because, you know, if people play e4, then I can trans, if he plays e4, I can transpose into knight d5. That way I have uh, uh, transposition to the French defense. So that is the point of d4, e6, because if he plays e4, I can transpose into the French defense. So my, my opponent is not an e4 player, so he played a move c4. I play f5. Knight c3, played by Onishchuk, knight f6, g3. So he just wants to put the bishop on g2. This, this move order is actually a little bit, a little bit tricky because if you play knight f3, uh, if you play knight f3, white can play actually a strong move bishop b4. And it's kind of complicated. But the move g3 is you know, quite tricky to deal with because he just wants to play the move uh, bishop g2. And then it will be very difficult for me to play b6, bishop b7 at some point. So this g3 is quite annoying. So I play d5. Trying to get a stone wall. Bishop g2, c6. Knight h3. Bishop d6. Knight h2, bishop d6, he castles. I castle. And now he played a move. I'm going to put it in training mode so you don't see the moves. Because I'm going to ask you to find it. So this is the position. So a castle, castle, he plays queen c2. Now, how should I proceed here? What are the ideas here, the alternatives here for me? The move I played is a little bit risky, but it does give me some chances to play for a win. So I was, uh, you know, Ashish. Takes on c4, yes. Okay, this is not a typical decision for this uh, opening. You know, this is the Dutch stone wall. So this is not a typical, but I wanted to get some kind of complicated position. I didn't want the structure to be just fixed. So where it's easier for white to play, because if I don't do that, then white plays bishop f4, trades the bishop, structure is fixed, and he's sort of enjoying a slightly better position, I think. So I took. It's a risky move. I think my opponent played well here. He played e4. That's the drawback of taking on c4. I lose the control of 4, so e4. So when he plays e4 here, now what is the threat? Do you see the threat? What is he trying to do here? What is he threatening? Yes, he's forking Adi. E5. E5, Adi, yes. He is threatening to fork these two pieces. So the question is now how to deal with this threat. So at first I was thinking, okay, I play bishop e7 or bishop b4, which I think are okay moves. But then somehow I played very risky in this game, but it worked out. It happens. Sometimes you uh, take play risky and... Uh, you get you go through a dangerous position, but you end up in a in a good position later. So sometimes it pays up. This was one of those cases. I mean, it kind of paid off my risk. So not always it does, but in this case it did. So what did I play here? Some of you might remember this game because it was played right here in the first round of the U.S. Championship. So some of you might remember this game, or later on, especially the the finish was very nice the ending of this game. So let's see here, what did I play here? Adi? E5, E5 absolutely. It's, it's risky because I'm not developed, you know? You don't supposed to play like this, you know, when you're not developed. This is usually doesn't work and this got me into a little bit of a trouble, but it was complicated. It was never a big, big trouble, but it was, you know, 
a little bit shaky at some point. So he took, which I was expecting it. I took, it looks like, wow, I have these two wonderful pawns in the middle. All I gotta do is protect them, finish up my development, things should be easy. But very strong response, 92. And suddenly I have a problem here. I have two pawns that are hanging and uh, very difficult to do anything. Both pawns are hanging, so now if I play d3, he plays queen c4 check. So what to do here? As, because if, if I lose all these pawns, I'll be in big trouble. So I don't want to lose all these pawns. So we got Ashish there raising his hand. Go ahead, Ashish. C5. C5. Why C5? You ready to give up C4? Okay. Well, um, it's better to lose C4 by hanging on to D4. So, but he takes check. He goes here. And this is a critical moment here. I'm going to flip it to your side here. And my opponent played knight G5, which is a very logical move. But here, he had a very powerful move here. And the reason I was hesitant, because I was really afraid of this move. Doesn't, doesn't D4 look interesting? Absolutely. It's actually very strong. This is what I was afraid of. I would go for this if not before. But before, I was like, ah. I didn't have a better choice, so I went for it. But before, it's extremely strong move here. The point is, I cannot play b6. I cannot hang on to my, I'm losing a pawn here, actually. Because like th this would be a real disaster, this. Knight g5, knight e6, bishop b2, it's just, it's just very bad for me. So this is seriously bad. So I have to play this move. Knight c6 takes, and bishop e5. And some complications, apparently, here. <coughs> White is better. <coughs> White is better, but <coughs> not so simple, OK? White is better, but not so simple, OK? Uh, yeah, I was really afraid of before. Because I, I saw this idea because it's typical. You break the position. You usually break the center when you have a lead in development. But he played knight, excuse me? No, he played knight g5. I don't think he saw it. If he saw it, he would have played it, I think. Or maybe he didn't like it. I don't know. But I think it's it's very strong because Ashish Bishop goes on b2 next. So it's very, very powerful. So he goes here. Knight g5. Knight c6. I'm not afraid to lose the exchange. So he plays Bishop f4. In fact, if he plays knight f7, I think I'm better. Take, take, here. Attack. Yeah, c4, d3, my pawns are rolling. Then I can take on f5. These pawns are quite strong. So I think I'm doing fine here. So he played bishop f4, trying to trade. Now I got to take this pawn. Knight f7 takes, queen takes. I'm down the exchange, but I have a pawn. I have a pawn and a knight for a rook. So technically, I'm down a pawn, but I have a 4 on 2 majority, and 3 on 2, it's not going to be that relevant at the moment because he can't do too much. But the problem is my b7 is hanging. So what do I do against this now? How do I try to protect? What would be the proper way to defend it? You know, sometimes you just need to play calm, you know? You don't have to... Sometimes you just need to play calm moves and improve your position. You don't have to do anything really, really complicated, okay? Huh? Better, better. A little bit better than that. <clears throat> huh? But why queen? Why are you moving the queen? You have a rook there on a8, right guys? What is the rook doing on an a8? Sitting there under target, yeah, on g2, bishop. So what are we going to do? Of course you're going to play rook b8. Protecting it. Now he goes, bishop takes c6. He takes the knight. Now what are you going to do? Bishop takes c6. Pawn takes c6. Now the pawn on b2 is hanging. 
Pano B2 is hanging. Now what do you do? So, so bishop, rook e1. He's trying to use this uh, rook on the e-file to put pressure. Yes. And now if he moves, you take on f4, you weaken the position. Okay? So that forces the capture. I capture back. Now his b2 pawn is also hanging at some point, but he plays the move rook b8. Uh, sorry, he plays knight c3. Now I cannot take because of which move? Rook e8, eh? So this would be a blunder because of rook e8. So you always have to watch out for the back rank. So now, this, we're talking about the push pass pawns, right? So when we have a pass pawn, push. Further you push, stronger it gets. And now he goes rook e7. His knight is doing a good job controlling, so he's activating his rook. Yeah, rook g8. Protecti protecting g7. Now, what do you do, huh? Yeah, I mean, you know, what is what, what is black threatening here? Bishop c4. Yeah, bishop g4 or, you know. So he plays rook a7, he just takes the pawn. You know, that's a useful pawn because now, at some point, he may start pushing his pawn as well. So here I have a couple of options. In fact, uh, when I analyzed the game later on with the computer, he didn't even like my move. He didn't think I played the strongest move. Bishop G4. Absolutely, I played bishop g4. By the way, computer preferred move was like queen d3. You know, like with the idea queen d3, queen c2, and apparently black is winning. It can't really defend. So, but I played the natural move bishop g4 because now I'm threatening to play, you know, okay, d1 at some point, and I didn't think he had any other moves except, uh, except, except queen e7. Because otherwise I'm just gonna go d1. So he played here, and now again, Maybe queen d3 would have been better here. But I had a specific idea in mind. So I went just for that idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you're right there. Yeah, with, uh, uh, okay. What did I play here? Ashish. Queen takes e7. Rook takes e7. Knight d5. The point is, if he takes my knight, I take back with the pawn. And I'm just promoting the d-pawn, right? So if he takes here, I just take and I promote d1. Okay? He had, he had a good defense here, but he made a move that he, he blundered, so he made a losing move. He played rook e2. Thinking that if I take on c3, he can take on d2, and he's okay there. And if I play bishop e2, he takes back with the knight on e2. He's maybe okay there too as well. But he missed like a really nice idea here that wins the game on the spot. And after my next move, he simply resigned. Let's see. Yes. Promotes the pawn. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> it's a tricky one. I quit. So I force the other rook to d1 because if knight takes, I just pick up for free. So, and of course he realized immediately that this is just over knight c3. Both rooks are hanging, bishop e2. And I'm up a whole bishop here. So he simply resigned after the move d1. But he has an interesting defensive resource here. I saw this resource. And I was like hoping he didn't find it, you know? Because after this resource, maybe I'm winning here, but it's a big maybe, okay? So let's see here, who can find the best defense here? Best defense for white. No, rook e3, I don't think you can hold. 
Okay, you get a couple of pawns. I mean, I can take on c3. This is what Ashish is suggesting, but this is... Take, take. I mean, I can even go here, you know? This could get actually really tricky now. <laughs> And then I promote and do some background stuff, okay? So you have to be careful. Okay? All right. No, it's not that. It's not that. Wait, what are you saying, Ashish? Okay. I don't have to give you my pawns. I know you want to take all the pawns and then maybe claim some chances here, but I'm not going to give you the pawns. Okay? A very clever idea. Like you really want to go rook d7 here, right? You would love to have this square to be able to control after he takes on c3, but you don't have that square right now. Is there a way to get that square, huh? Is there a way to get that square somehow? Huh? Bishop d1? And he got it. The young student, excellent, yes. F3. The point here is, if, he take, if I take only seven, he takes my bishop, then this pawn is not going anywhere. If I take on c3, he goes bc. If I take bishop f3, it looks like I'm just winning here. But now white has the saving move here. Rook d7, and he's winning the pawn back. Okay? And this is going to be a draw after I play d1. So, f3, I have to actually play bishop takes f3. Now rook d7. At least for a moment he stops me. But it's very interesting. He doesn't have too many, too many moves here. It's almost like a Suksavank here. And now, who can find a powerful move? <coughs> because I have uh, problems on the back rank here. So I need this move here. G5, G5 correct, yes. <coughs> that will allow me to also establish a good strength on F3, you know? So I want to try to do that. G4 to protect it. And now, King F2, you just play G4. Or rook f8 idea as well. So if he takes on d5, I take back with a pawn. Pawn takes d5. Now let's say king f2. Now what do you do? G4, or even this, this works too. This pushes him back because he's on that file, you know? Now you're threatening d1, and if he goes back to g1, the ultimate idea here is you want to try to go here and take on b2. Back here, g4. Now he, he has a tr he has a difficulty uh, protecting b2 here. And if he goes, let's say knight d1, we switch here, threatening to go rook e2 now. Threatening to play rook e2 check. So he has to go knight c3. And now we capture. He captures. We check. If the king goes back on uh, g1, we have rook e1 check, taking the rook. If he goes here, we take this, check, take that guy as well. And that's the idea. Okay, let's review this game. We have some students who came late so they can see the entire game as well, and that way we can practice it. So, <coughs> let's see if you remember the entire game. Go ahead. e6. Since I'm a French player, I can start with this move order because if he plays e4, <coughs> I can transpose into French. So c4, and now, surprise for my opponent here. f5, knight c3. G g3 is with the idea bishop g2. I, I initially, I didn't want to go to Stonewall, but then I didn't have too many other alternatives. So I went here, and now we have Dutch Stonewall, right? Knight h3, castle, bishop here, 
Queen C2 and here a uh, risky decision. I'm not saying it's the best, but it's a risky decision, but an interesting one. Now he plays E4, trying to threaten me. He's trying to play E5. E5, yes. Yes. I'm winning a pawn, by the way. That's why you yeah. okay. That's an extra pawn. Now, I'm not just uh, doubling it. I'm actually picking up a pawn here. Okay. And one day I'm hoping maybe this pawn will be something. But it's risky, though. It's very risky play. But you got to take risk. If you're playing strong grandmasters with block, if you don't want to take any risk, you're not going to get too many chances. So this way, I went through some dangerous position, but got some chances, some uh, you know, imbalance, you know? E5, correct. Takes. Now he goes 92. Now pressuring on d4 and also pressuring on c4. c5 protecting it. Queen c4 check, king h8. And this is the moment where I was worried. Because he had this move in mind. You know, I was like worried. If he plays this move, I didn't like my position that much. Which move I'm talking about that he should have played? B4, excellent. Yes, this was a very strong move. And I have to play knight c6 and go for this, which is some really sharp lines, f4, d3. It gets really messy, okay? But it looks like white is a little bit better. It's like one of the lines is like this, 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 knight e5, b5. So it's some, some sharp lines. White is a little bit better there. The way he played, actually, I thought my position was more or less fine. You know, knight c What's the move? Bishop f4. Rook d8, protecting it. He took on c6. Rook f e1. D3. Now, if the knight moves, I take on f4, weaken the structure. So he took here. Now he goes here. Rook e. G8. Huh? Bishop g4, again, queen d3, queen c2 was probably stronger. Queen d7, take, take, knight d5. And now, okay, he played rook e2, which lost two. d1 queen, he resigned because he loses a piece. If takes with rook, I take, take. So, uh, the only move here to stay in a game was f3, exclamation mark. I take. Now, again, I'm threatening to take on c3. It, it's hard to play f3 because it doesn't look like it's going to do much. I mean, bishop looks like very strong there, but rook d7, g5. I saw this move, and I knew I'm going to have to play this move to cement, to, to get my king uh, from the back rank uh, uh, threats and also uh, cement the position of the bishop. I like this. I think I have good advantage here. <coughs> so you play here, rook f8. And, and rook is entering to the second rank. Only one, so it has to go here. Check. Yeah, this looks really good. 13 game, okay? Okay, thanks f everybody for coming for this class. So we're gonna have a short break and we'll have another class starting immediately, okay? All right. Thanks.